दी कॉस्मिक लो स्टेप बाय स्टेप नानक इज गोइंग इन टू दी मैथडोलॉजी फॉर इन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फर्स्ट ही मैं दैट दैट विच इज इज नेचर एंड द एक्ट्रीब्यूट how one can attain to that state the next sutra begins with adi sach adi means beginning jugadi sach means true in the dissolution whatsoever i have said it is true in the beginning true in the dissolution adi sach jugadi sach nanak who see be such nanak says that alone is the truth continue soche soche na ho vai lakwar you can think about it a thousand times but nothing will happen chupa chup na ho vai ye lai raha levtar you can remain silent and yet still it will not happen and then he asks a question kib sachya ra ho ye This is soliloquy. Give such yara for ye. Give kule to the pan. When will there be the dawn of truth? How will manifest? And kule means ego. And when will ego vanish or dissolve? He comes with a response. Hukum rajai chala nanak likya nar. Nanak says flow with the existential law. there is a law that exists in the cosmos everything is bound by it orbindo says there is a power within that knows beyond our knowing we are not aliens nor as a strangers joined we are bound to each other by a causeless force look at the seasons who is running the seasons that when the spring has to start when summer when winter when autumn when all these seasons will take place there is a law a cosmic law and accordingly everything takes place nanak says he is the only truth he is true in the beginning he is true in the end the solution he is true now and he will be true forever and what is the nature of this truth or as we call it hak It is beyond time and space. For this, you have to move from the realm of the mind to another realm. Of this, you know not. Neither by thinking can you attain. Also, by constant remembering, you will miss the essence of it. Inner chattering continues and abates. and there seems to be no way to cease this chattering how and when will the veil of ignorance and illusion shall vanish and when will truth manifest the methodology comes flow with the existential law nanak says what is the definition of truth and non truth what does a master like nanak understand by truth is it in comparison or contrast to false that is a mathematical fact how to make you understand this may be a problem with you it is bound to be however such is not the case with nanak having drunk with drunk the life's elixir words are simply flowing effortlessly out of nana it seems as if words are coming not from the mind although my mechanism is working to continue the message but words are coming from the deepest core of nana the infinite unfathomable realm of harmony and one is nanak says are the such jubadi such true in the beginning true in the end 
in both circumstances whether it is beginning or dissolution it is he is true he is the only truth he is true in the beginning he is true in the end he is true now and he will be true forever his truth is beyond time and space such is the only definition of truth that which is now but not later is transient that cannot be god god is eternity this is the definition of truth and untruth untruth is that which is ephemeral and short lived something that goes on changing untruth is that which cease to exist at the two shores look at the dream before you went to sleep it was not there and when we woke up again it is not there a dream exists between these two shores of waking and dreaming state of awareness and these states are not permanent not in your control either until you are totally awake and when you are totally awake then you will remain awake even when your sleep and dreaming state continues then dream is no more and thus disappears the veil all that be clouds to manifestation of truth the veil of ignorance and illusion as well dreams are when you are dreaming in the morning it disappears on waking you know dream cannot be true but we remain in ghost it was not there in the evening again in this morning the dream is no more one day your body was no more and one day again it will be no more your body is forms it exists but it is ephemeral truth is that which exists beyond time and space this is the definition of ha this is the definition of nanak and all other mystics that which exists beyond time and space and that is why god is true to ha because he exists beyond time and space one moment there is anger and next moment it is no more this is dream like nanak says when you allow this understanding to sink in you there will be transformation do not be too much concerned with mind and its mechanism of veiling truth nanak says search that which never dies and is never born that which is beyond all changes what is that within that never changes seek that alone says an ecstatic man certainly that lies within you will by your vision and cognition and all changes happen around that eternal alone try to understand this a wheel moves how does it happen wheel moves around an axle the axle remain fixed and moved axle never moves you remove the axle the wheel falls immediately without the axle wheel can no more revolve the change in the movement of the wheel happens around the fixed axle so to the axle of soul remains ever fixed and body revolves around this axle of soul nana rules that which is is true in the beginning true in the end it is true now and will be true forever truth that alone is truth how can that alone be true because nothing else exists except that which is eternal and immutable all the rest is dream like this veils the manifestation of truth 
Now, what is the methodology to attain to this? When anger plagues your consciousness, hate inflicts you, allow the words of Nanak in you like the dissolving notes of an enchanting melody or an intoxicating awareness. Remember that which is true in the beginning, true in the end, true now and true forever. Be a witness. You will realize slowly and slowly all that is futile will certainly begin to vanish. The essential will begin to evolve. The world will begin to disappear slowly and slowly. You can remain in the world but the world will not create problems for you. Nanak says, now for you every little thing creates a problem. A little turmoil comes in the life, your whole system crashes down. But Nanak says, if you are a witness, then all that is superfluous will vanish and essential will begin to evolve. You cannot attain this, attain to this awareness or witnessing by thinking alone. Through thinking, you have lost your serenity. Nanak says God is not and the conclusion of any hypothesis. Also, he is not the conclusion of logic. God is eternal truth. The way is not through thinking. What will you gain through thinking? By thinking you have lost it. Through thinking you have lost, you are lost in the forest of words and duality. You have to attain eyes to see that which is essential. When your eyes are full of thoughts, you will remain blind. Your eyes need to be thoughtless without any speck and thoughts are the speck in your eyes. Zen calls this no mind. Kabir calls this as Unmuni Dasha. When you are neither asleep nor awake, a state of awareness Patanjali calls this as Nirvichar Samadhi, a state of awareness when there is no thought. All these are different ways to explain the same state of awareness. This refers to a state when all thoughts, opportunities and alternatives are no more. Neither by thinking nor by a forced silence can you attain to this. Sometimes people think that by closing the eyes and remaining silent, you are silent outwardly, but deep down a turmoil continues. You are sitting on a volcano. Thinking is an effort. You cannot fall asleep through effort. All efforts to drop, all efforts have to drop. And then suddenly you realize that you have fallen asleep. Your effort alone will become an obstruction in attaining the inner silence. Just as sleep is not an effort, it happens on its own. You can become a statue-like outwardly, but inner dialogue and disturbance will continue. You will be like the one sitting on a volcano, ready to explode any moment. This happened. Once Nanak was the guest at a Muslim chief, Nawab. Nanak is beyond religion. One who has known, he is bound to be, he is not bound by finiteness of caste, creed and religion. Knowing this, the chief invited Nanak for Friday Salah or prayer. Nanak agreed for the prayer only on one condition. He said, I will certainly offer prayers if you are going to offer your prayers. 
The chief could not understand this condition. He is going to offer the prayers anyways. Entire village gathered. Hindus and Muslims too. Everyone wanted to know what Nanak is doing. Hindus lamented as they thought Nanak is going to be a Muslim. Muslims rejoiced that a man like Nanak has now got senses. This is how it happens. We see things as we are. And fear remains the guiding force for all of our thinking and approaches to life. Nanak entered the mosque. Prayer began. Nanak stood behind the chief for the prayer. The chief was angry as Nanak just remained standing. Somehow the prayer finished. How can you pray or fool a Nanak? And when you are full of anger, there can be no prayer. You may pretend, you may show, but there will, there will be no prayer. The chief was angry with Nanak and complained that he did not fulfill his promise of offering the prayers. At this, Nanak remain, reminded the chief of the condition. The condition was, Nanak will definitely offer prayers only if Nawab offered the prayer as well. Now, Nawab can fool anybody else, but he cannot do this to Nana. At this, chief responded, are you in senses? Everyone knows that I offered the prayers. People are witness to my claim. Nana replied, I am not concerned with all your understanding or the witness. I am concerned with all that was happening deep within. You were not in prayer. Instead, you were buying horses and cowboy, and your priest or imam, behind whom, who was leading you in prayers, was busy cutting the crop in the fields. Now tell me, how can I offer the prayers when you did not? This surprised both the chief and the imam. The most important and prestigious horse of the Nawab had died. And the chief was filled with agony and he was wondering how to go to Kabul and buy another horse. And as far as Imam is concerned, his crop is ready, there is shortage of labor. This worried him and he was cutting the crop. How can I offer prayers when neither you nor your priest offer prayers? Prayer is a state of awareness. It is springs out of your inner serenity. Prayer and meditation cannot be forced. It is not important what you do. What is important, what is going on deep within. You can be a statue-like. You can hold and discipline your body easily, but you cannot discipline your mind. This is what happens when people go into meditation. More thoughts arise on the inner sky and you remain worried you are trying not to have the thoughts arising. You have to be simply a witness to it and thoughts will begin to disintegrate slowly and slowly. Just as when the sun shines, comes from behind the cloud, Slowly and slowly the clouds begin to disperse. The moment breeze blows, the clouds begin to scatter. This is what happens when people go into meditation. More and more thoughts arise on the inner sky. Whenever you go to your religious place, your inner disturbance surfaces. When you are engaged in work, there is not much energy remain for disturbance. And when you sit in meditation or in prayer, your energies are not divided. There is the total energy is available to you. Just give me a minute here. When you are going into prayers or meditation, 
the total energies available and disturbance begins to surface. But when you go to a theatre, you are a part of it. Or if you go to a discotheque, you remain peaceful. However, in meditation and prayer, you remain twisting and turning this thing. Why does this happen? Theatre, discotheque, or all associated with your desires. There, all that is being provoked, that is part of your deep unconsciousness. This resonates with you. Hence, there is enjoyment. You enjoy the theatre, you enjoy discotheque, you enjoy the parties, you enjoy dancing and things like these. Because these are connected with your desires and deep unconsciousness, this resonates with you. Hence, there is enjoyment and you are never bored. Whatever happens in the temple does not resonate with you. You are being forced to go into. This is why such things remain boring. Nanak says even by plasticizing silence you cannot attain. You may continue to meditate, nothing will happen. The hunger of the senses will not vanish even if the mountain of food is provided. The hunger for God is not an ordinary hunger. Nothing can satiate this. How can we be truthful? And how can this veil of ignorance and falsehood or ego vanish? Nanak says, Hukum is the only way. This is the significant statement. And what is Hukum? Hukum literally means the order or the command. Nothing will happen by your doing. When you are false, then all that evolves will definitely be false. It matters not if you are speaking truth. To Nanak, Hukum implies the cosmic law, the synergistic harmony, the power. This exists within us as power that knows beyond our knowing. This is known as Kashp in Sufi terminology. Before I begin, let me explain an anecdote. Once Nanak stayed in a village. The chief of the village had a religious function. Entire village was invited. Nanak was also invited, but Nanak did not go. Instead, he stayed at the place of a poor carpenter Lalu. Several times the chief sent the messages for Nanak, but he did not go. Ultimately, the chief came himself. At his request, Nanak accompanied him to his place. And he asked Lalu to also come. At his request, Nanak accompanied him to his place. But Nanak refused the pure sanctified food that was offered for him. The food was prepared by the chefs who have taken a bath with holy waters before starting the cooking. At this, Nanak said, If you insist, bring your food. And he asked Lalu to bring his dry flat bread and well, without any vegetable as well. It is said Nanak took the dry fruit of Lalu in one hand. And in another hand, he took the delicious food of the chief and squeezed. It is said from the food of Lalu, the stream of milk came out, whereas from the food of the chief, blood came out. Whether this happened or not is not important, but it is symbolic. It is significant. If you are dishonest, it does not matter if you bathe, or wash the vegetables in pure and holy water. If your life is that of dishonesty, falsehood, exploitation and torture, then every grain of your food is soaked in blood. It is not important 
if this really happened or not. However, the anecdote is very important and gives an important message. Nanak says nothing will happen on its own. When you are dishonest, this will become part of you. You will speak truth only if it benefits you. It only if it benefits your dishonesty. Even your truth will harm others. Nanak says, leave everything on him. Let thy will prevail. Whatever condition or state he keeps you, you remain in total acceptance. His commandment or way becomes your way. Accept all that is happening. Flow with life. Life is given by God. Only he knows what is good and what is not. Be in harmony. Behind every happening there is a cosmic law, a meaning, a secret. Thy wish is my command. Then you will find suddenly an inner harmony, oneness and silence begins to descend. No more worries. You are part of this cosmic harmony. I recollect many years ago, my father wanted me to study physics, chemistry and mathematics because he didn't want his son to go and become an ordinary clerk. Instead he wanted, because in India there is the major jobs are the engineer, doctor or high professional fields, but I had no interest. So I did not pass the B.Sc. failed. And ultimately he said if I cannot do the B.Sc. with science subjects, there is no need to study. Then my uncle Sufi master wrote a couplet and that is stuck in my mind. That words Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki Kuch maslehat isi me hai mere parwar kudar ki Khiza means autumn Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki Bahar means spring Each time in the scheme of existence Autumn comes Let's begin from autumn Autumn comes All the leaves of the tree fall tree becomes bare. You may lament over it. But this is the way the tree protects itself from the snow. And it survives during the intense snow when everything is covered. And when trees are covered with white snow, it has its own beauty. Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki. When spring comes after the autumn, there is a totally a new shape to it. Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki. When autumn comes, leaves fall, tree becomes bare. What is the reason behind these? Kuch maslehat isi me hai mere parver tigar ki. Do you understand what is the will of the Divine behind this autumn that comes into your life? When problems come, why do they come? In Mayor of Casterbridge, Thomas Hardy writes a line, there is a clergy. He complains, why do miseries and misfortunes come to a clergy? Why do miseries and misfortunes come to a clergy? The answer comes as a soliloquy simply to enhance the favors of Almighty. Simply to enhance the favors of Almighty. When these problems are coming, it is the outcome of your own understanding, your own actions. There is a cosmic law. Nanak says, leave everything on him. Let thy will prevail. Whatever condition or state he keeps you in, remain pleased and accept it as a blessing. 
as a gift from the divine from my beloved his commandment or way becomes lordly except all that is happening love with life life is given by god only he knows what is good and what is not be in harmony behind every happening there is a cosmic law a meaning a secret thy wish is my command then you will find suddenly an inner harmony and oneness and silence begins to descend no more worries you are part of this cosmic harmony what is the worry the worry is that you are not in harmony with all that is happening the only sutra or the secret of peace in the east from laose to nanak is total acceptability omar khayam says moving finger writes and having read all that moves on nor all thy wit nor piety shall lure it back to cancel half a line hukum rajai chalana nanak likhya nal to flow with the cosmic law nanak says is the way there is a cosmic law everything happens according to this cosmic law flow with this cosmic law you can float in the sky that nanak calls ek omkar satna and there is only one methodology the hukum the wish of the god once it happened in bulk there was a chief his name was ibrahim he had a slave who was very vibrant and loving ibrahim brought him home because of his ways the chief fell in love with the slave ibrahim in inquired how he wants to remain what he would like to eat etc it is said that the reply of the slave was beautiful the slave replied my wish does not matter whatever the master wants really matters i am your slave and you are my master it is said with this reply the life of ibrahim transformed he bowed down to the slave Abraham got the secret that he has been searching for long and it happened one day the two were going somewhere and suddenly nanak suddenly the chief saw a tree and there it was full of fruits he picked up a fruit he peeled it and cut it with his own hands and offered it to the slave slave has eaten one piece he asked for another one nanak the chief gave him the other also and now only one portion was remained the slave tried to snatch from the hands of the chief but chief said don't be greedy let if the fruit is so good as you say let me taste it he put the respect the, the peg of that fruit into his mouth it was bitter like poison bitter like poison and he had to spit it but when he saw this slave eating that he was enjoying every bit of it as if it was a delicious fruit the chief inquired why did you not complain you know what replied it the slave ki he said from these hands i got so many blessings so many blessings and good fortune then why to complain for one bit of fruit when i had gotten so many blessings all that i have in my life is the blessing from those hands then why to complain about one single bit of bread this is not the way of a devotee it is said the chief's life transformed but we are complaining about this small thing it is so and so but 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 always remains there he is good but the food is really good but but always comes in 
And this is what Nanak calls the flow with the cosmic law. This is Nanak's methodology to attain to inner oneness, harmony and bliss. Nanak blocked, thus he blocked all the doors for ego. First, Nanak emphasized the grace of the Master, that you cannot attain to this without the grace of the Master. And now he gives the next one. Hukum Rajai Chalana Nanak Likhyana, to flow with the law of the existence. Let thy will. We within the existential law flow with the ultimate way. This alone is the secret. He knows what is right. Flow with the ultimate will. He knows what is right. And this is the meaning of surrender in such simple words. Nanak explained what is surrender. Surrender means flowing with thy will. Let thy will prevail. Let thy will prevail. Nana continues. In the next sutra, he explains the nature of this hukuma, cosmic law. And he continues that everyone is within that cosmic law, no one is outside that. The poor, the rich, the high, the low, everyone is within that law and one who knows that ego cannot enter into him. How can ego enter into him when he understands that there is a cosmic law and we are all bound by it? The rich, the poor, nothing can be said about it. You cannot say anything about this cosmic law. It continues. 